guys. I hope your week, weekend is going well. I'm not exactly sure what day of the week this video is gonna go up, but um, because I share with you guys my grocery hauls every week, um, you have been asking me if I can show you how I prepare some of the veggies and stuff that I get at Costco and Kroger um, using my air fryer and my Kosari, because I'm always talking about it in the grocery haul, but you're like, what exactly does she do with those things? So this past week, I just uh, filmed some, a few of the things that I make um, at night. And that's typically when I don't film, because uh, I'm usually editing the vlogs. But I just captured some, some shots of, of what I make. It's not, it's a little rough, so <laughs> bear with me. But let me know how you like it. And with that, Kosari Air Fryer Adendo. All right, so this is a pretty typical weeknight uh, soup that I make for myself that you guys have been asking to, to see how I do it. These are the ingredients. Uh, these are the wild mushrooms that I get at Costco and I always show and you guys ask me how I prepare them. This is a tomato powder that I get on iHerb from uh, Frontier Co-op. It's just powdered tomato. You can also use uh, tomato paste, I imagine, but um, I, I bought a huge bag of this and it looks like I'm gonna need to get some more soon. I also use, uh, I'm just, I randomly, whatever vegetables I happen to grab and I'm in the mood for, I kind of gravitate towards. So tonight I'm gonna do some cabbage in the soup. I'm gonna do two, um, um, parsnips, a turnip, some onion, not the entire onion, probably just a quarter of the onion, and a quarter of a cup of, these are split green peas. Um, I, sometimes I will do brown lentils, sometimes I will do cubed tofu. Um, so yeah, tonight I'm gonna be doing split green peas. And then as far as seasonings, uh, I love Frontier Co-op seasonings, they don't have any salt. Uh, so I'm going to be using this Herbs of Italy one that I get on iHerb as well. It's uh, really good. This one and the pizza one um, are really, really nice one. Actually, they're all great. Aside from the Cajun one, the Cajun one is a disappoint. Especially if you're Cajun, you're going to be like, eh -eh. Um, All right. Sorry, that, that wasn't meant to, just to imitate you if you are Cajun. That was just me being me. I'm also going to um, throw in a little of this True Lime Crystallized Lemon. Uh, this, if you have fresh lemon juice, that's fine too. This just brings out the flavors really nicely. I don't salt my food. Uh, that alarms most people, but I just find that uh, salt grossly overwhelms the flavor of food. And reducing the amount of excess salt in my diet, I have a heightened sense of taste and I really am able to appreciate flavors much better. Um, so yeah, anyways, I'm just going to chippity chop up some of this stuff. Sometimes, frequently I also add garlic too, but I'm not gonna be doing that today because I don't feel like peeling the garlic. I don't peel my vegetables either. Um, aside from the onion. I don't peel like parsnips or carrots or this, I don't. Um, you know, there's no reason to, unless you just don't like, like them, but they have high, they're high in minerals, so I keep that in there.
so I have just put in all of the chopped up veggies, the mushrooms, the seasoning, the tomato uh, powder, and I put in one and a half cups of water. And I'm just giving it a stir with this um, silicone, what is this called? Spatula? <laughs> Spatula spoon thing from Le Creuset. Uh, just to kind of mix it all up. And then I add the cabbage on top of it. Uh, and then I add another half cup of water on top of the cabbage. And the reason I do it that way is just the cabbage takes up a lot of space in here and it becomes hard to stir everything together. Um, if you don't stir everything all together, it ends up more or less working out. So, you know, that's not imperative. I just find that um, it kind of makes everything a little bit, a little bit more, more evenly flavored when I do it that way. Now, these mushrooms, they flavor you know, they impart a lot of, of rich flavor to, to this soup and to this broth. So that's another reason why there's really not a, a huge need to go adding, adding salt. It, this, the minerals and, and what have you in this from all the veggies and stuff really, really make a very rich, rich tasting broth. And that's about how much cabbage I throw in, but it's going to shrink down quite a bit with the slow cook. And uh, yeah, I don't do not do anything super fancy with the chopping. I just kind of give it a rough chop. All right, so yep, just added the cabbage on top. Now I'm gonna put the lid on. Then I just use the slow cooker setting. So you can do this in any slow cooker. You don't need the Kosari. Uh, but FYI, my Kosari duels as a pressure cooker and I, I love it. But aside, that, that aside, uh, I just do the slow cooker setting and I do 200 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. It'll run for six hours at that. But typically I let this go for approximately two to three hours at that temperature, 200 degrees Fahrenheit. FYI about the Kosari, if you do get to the maximum amount of time within the, within the predetermined setting, it will default to the keep warm setting after the time has elapsed. Alternatively, you can adjust both the temperature and the, and the cook time manually, but I always rely on the, on the settings. This is why I love my Kosari. The settings are awesome and nail it every time, as opposed to my mom has an instant pot and cooking beans in that thing takes forever and is, you know, you've really got to, you really got to practice with the Instant Pot, whereas the Kosari is totally foolproof. But anyways, I'm just going to hit on start and that will go, like I said, for, I don't know, approximately two, two and a half hours, uh, give or take. All right, so side note, the uh, Kosari has been going, uh, the slow cooker's been going for about, oh, I don't know, approximately an hour and 20 minutes. And you can see at this juncture, this is the one problem with, with pressure cookers and slow cookers is the lid gets so steamy. Um, I just take the lid off and go ahead and give it a mid midpoint feedback, <laughs> midpoint feedback swizzle. Um, see how much that reduced down? And I'm just gonna let it stay cooking low and slow there while I finish work before I sit down to serve it up and eat, but it's more or less ready, but the longer it marinates in there, the happier it gets. All right, so my soup is done cooking and uh, I just uh, have it here out of the base with the lid off and the spatula there. Um, but to show you guys, I put half a cup of frozen peas in this bowl that I'm going to pour the soup into. And the reason I do it this way is because the hot liquid goes into this and um, you know, dissolves the coldness and un unfreezes the peas. Wow. <laughs> um, thaws the peas out. That's what I'm trying to say. And in doing so, it cools the soup to a temperature that I can not burn my mouth on. And then I'm just going to dust it with some nutritional yeast. 
I consume this for added B12 as a vegan, and I also consume it because I like the way that it tastes. It has like a um, sort of cheesy umami type taste, not umami, but sort of like a cheesy taste, like um, cheesy like uh, popcorn, you know, cheddar popcorn kind of flavor, that sort of saltiness, but it doesn't have any salt in it. And it has, how much B12 exactly? 14 micrograms, so, um, you know, it's pretty good. So that, in addition to my um, B12 fortified non-dairy milk and B12 supplements, I am, I'm riding high, guys. Levels are solid. All right, pre-nutritional yeast, you can see that's what it looks like. <laughs> now it sounds strange, but it's really tasty. And I'm just gonna dust a little nutritional yeast on. Ta-da! But the frozen peas thawed out, they have, I think, five grams of protein, and then the split peas have nine grams. Uh, and then I think you get like, I don't know, three grams in total of protein from all the vegetables. Oh, and uh, one serving of nutritional yeast has five grams of protein, so. There you go. The All right, and so you guys have been requesting uh, for me to show you how I use my air fryer. And so this is a typical thing that I eat. This is uh, chayote squash. And so I'm gonna show you how I bake that in the air fryer to make like little, little zesty, uh, I don't know, bites? I don't know what you would call this. All right, but just to start, I'm just gonna slice this up. And you do wanna be careful if you're using chayote squash. It releases some things that can be irritants on your hands. So make sure after you're done slicing, you wash your hands immediately uh, and do not touch your eyes uh, before washing your hands. Alternatively, to be conservative, you could also use gloves that would protect your hands. You guys can see I slice these up. It almost looks like an avocado, right? Um, okay, and then I just put it like in a Tupperware container. I bought these Tupperware containers at HEB, it's a Texas grocery store chain, uh, years ago. And they, far and away, the best little cheapy Tupperware containers money can buy. They, they are made out of, of they're built Texas tough. We'll just put it that way. Um, All right, but I just kind of put them in there and I'm gonna be using the True Lime Lime Cilantro on this. Alternatively, they make a plain lime. You could also use a lemon, it tastes wonderful. And uh, you also, they also make an orange one that I have but have not tried. You can use any, any seasoning in this, by the way, but this uh, really, really makes it makes it taste almost like, if you just use a lime one, it almost, when you bite into the pieces, they almost taste like some kind of tequila, I don't know how to describe it, it's amazing. Um, but anyways, I'm just gonna liberally dust this in here and what happens is I, I put it in there and put the lid on and give it a shake and then I just leave it like that for approximately 20 minutes in the fridge and the juices from the chayote squash kind of dissolve the uh, crystallized lime and it's, it's essentially like lime juice, basically, at that point. And then I throw it in the air fryer. So I'll show you guys that once it's, once it's done. All right, so my chayote squash has been incubating in the uh, lime cilantro, uh, crystallized lime cilantro mambo combo for approximately 30 minutes. I kind of got occupied with some emails, but 
you can leave it in there as long as you want, honestly. Um, and it kind of just sort of starts to turn into lime juice and the cilantro uh, settles down. Um, but I just throw them into the basket of the air fryer and make sure they're kind of, I don't know, fairly evenly distributed. Um, I put the air fryer at 350 degrees and I set it to So there they are, and I let them cool in the air fryer for a few minutes because if you just pull this out, it is quite quite hot. So I let it kind of cool after it after it's done. But there they are, and they really taste delicious. I kind of like them with a little bit of that that brown brownness to them. But see how the um, the sides bubble up. The insides are really soft and juicy, and the outsides are nice and crispy. And when you bite into this, it almost tastes like you're biting into some kind of juicy exotic fruit. It's really a, an interesting experience. So definitely try this. It's quite good. So this is how I typically eat all of that spinach <laughs> in a bowl. I don't put any dressing on it. I just eat the plain spinach. It tastes so good. Um, I have been, and I've been doing this though and enjoying it. I just sprinkle a little of the Frontier Co-op pizza seasoning on it for just a little extra extra flavor but it's really good just plain like this i know all right and so you guys have been asking about my baked radishes it is similar to the chayote squash only <laughs> i'm not gonna do i'm not gonna do the seasoning um i just like them yeah it's similar to how i do the chayote squash you can do the um the seasoning if you like uh but i kind of like them just plain tbh so I just throw in a couple of handfuls like that in a mono layer. Close her up and I give it about 20 minutes. Ta-da! Baked radishes. They taste really good. See how the skin's get bubbly? Mmm, radish vision. They're really delicious. So yeah, those are some common things that I throw together for myself. I know they are a little strange. Um, I don't know that my palate suits everyone, but that's how I eat. And those are some of the things that I make. Um, you know, that's a typical soup that I eat on a weeknight. And uh, so yeah, I uh, have an unusual palate. If you're curious, I have a playlist, by the way, of recipe videos. It's called recipe. Recipes Lifestyle DIY, I probably need to retitle it. It's basically recipe videos and some of my non-skincare, non-blog content. It's like my, my uh, Fabletics videos, my um, try-on hauls, some random crafts that I showed <laughs> earlier on in my channel. Um, so yeah, check that out. I'll put this there and let me know what you think of this kind of uh, raw, <laughs> unedited, well, it'll be edited, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, let me know um, and check the description box. I'll list everything below that I used uh, as far as stuff that I get on iHerb that I might have mentioned. But yeah, let me know. Hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.